There are different methods for solving quadratic equation. The first one which we have seen is by factorization. The second method is by solving it by the square root principle. Suppose you have a general equation for the quadratic function given as fx is ax squared plus bx plus c is the general equation. If you have a quadratic equation of the form c7x squared minus 28x plus 3 equals 0 then I am going to solve it using the square root principle. For that first of all I'll convert this general equation into the standard form. The first requirement for this is the conversion. To convert it I'll take the first two terms I'll take the common term outside. The coefficient of x squared is 7. The coefficient of x squared is 7 outside. x squared minus 28 times 4x. 28 is 7 times 4. 7 is outside the bracket. So I am left with 4x here. Among the first two terms, I'm bringing out the coefficient of a squared common. Now to make it a perfect square, this x squared minus 4x is 2 times x times 2. So this 2 is running short. This is the second term which is required to make it a perfect square. So I'll add 2 square. I'm subtracting 2 square as well plus 3. Now this means 7 times first, second and third term. Together, these three terms can be written as x minus 2 whole square minus 2 times 2 is 4. It can be written as this plus 3 equals 0. Now 7 times x minus 2 whole square 7 times x minus 2 whole square 7 times 4 is 28 plus 3 equals 0. This implies 7x minus 2 whole square minus 28 plus 3 is minus 25 equals 0. This means 7 times x minus 2 whole square is 25. This implies x minus 2 whole square is 25 by 7. Dividing by 7 both the sides, this 7 will get cancelled. And if I take under root both the sides, I have x minus 2 equals because of under root plus minus, under root of 25 is 5, under root of 7 is under root 7. Now I have two values, x minus 2 equals plus 5 by root 7, which gives x equal to 2 plus 5 by root 7 and the second value is x minus 2 equals minus 5 by root 7 so x equals 2 minus 5 by root 7 so these two values are the required values of x or they are the zeros of x this is how we calculate the zeros of the given quadratic equation or we solve the given quadratic equation using square root principle. We'll take some more example. Suppose you have an equation, say x squared minus 2x plus 20 equal to 0. Among the first two terms, the coefficient of x squared is 1, so there's no need to take anything common. You can just separate these terms with the bracket. Now to make it a complete square you have x squared minus 2 times x you already have it is nothing but plus 1 times 1 so you're running short of this one so I'll add 1 square I'll subtract 1 square plus 20 so you have x these three terms together form x minus 1 whole square this minus and plus depends on this sign as soon as long as this is minus this is minus. If this is plus, this term is plus. x minus 1 whole square minus 1 square plus 20. So x minus 1 whole square minus 1 plus 20 is plus 19.
if because I'm solving equation this implies equal to 0 this implies equal to 0 there will be implies sign everywhere because I'm solving an equation now I have x minus 1 whole square equals minus 19 if I take under root both the sides there is no real root for this minus 19 so the given quadratic equation you have x minus 1 equals plus minus under root of minus 19 if instead of minus 19 it is positive 19 you can obtain the real roots corresponding to the given equation but because of minus 19 you can just say that no real roots no real roots of the given quadratic equation exists given quadratic equation exists of course the imaginary roots exist and it exists in this way x minus 1 equals plus minus under root 19 i this is iota which is nothing but under root of minus 1 so your roots are x equals 1 plus under root of 19 i and x equals 1 minus under root of 19 i these are your roots corresponding or these are the zeros corresponding to given quadratic equation if you look at the third example like we'll consider our equation say x squared plus 6x minus 25 equals c0 again these two terms first two terms x squared plus 6x can be written as 2 times x times 3 so we are running short of 3 squared minus 3 squared minus 25 equals 0 so for these three things we can write x plus 3 whole square you have minus 9 minus 25 equals 0 so x plus 3 whole square minus 25 plus 9 is 34 so minus 34 equals 0 so x plus 3 whole square equals 34 taking under root both the sides taking root both the sides you have x plus 3 equals plus minus under root of 34 as long as this value is positive you can calculate the root if the values are negative your roots are imaginary so two cases are there x equals minus 3 plus minus under root of 34 so one value is x equals minus 3 plus root 34 the other value is x equals minus 3 minus root 34 these are the two zeros or the values corresponding to the given quadratic equation